Welcome to season three of Public Health On Call, a podcast from the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. I'm Josh Sharfstein, Vice Dean for Public Health Practice and Community Engagement and a former secretary of Maryland's Health Department. Our goal is to bring scientific evidence and experience to the public health news of the day through informative interviews with scientists, community leaders, policy experts, public health officials, clinicians, and more. If you have ideas or questions for us to cover, please email us at publichealthquestion at jhu.edu. That's publichealthquestion at jhu.edu for future podcast episodes. Hi, I'm Lindsay Smith-Rogers, the producer of Public Health On Call. Today, Dr. Josh Sharfstein is speaking to Dr. Lisa Maragakis, the Director of Infection Prevention at the Johns Hopkins Health System. Remember that time when the Dallas Cowboys football player celebrated a sure touchdown too early and fumbled the ball? Dr. Maragakis does, and she's thinking about it these days with respect to COVID-19. Let's listen. Dr. Lisa Maragakis, it's great to talk again. How are things going with COVID at Johns Hopkins? Thanks for having me. You know, we are heading into brighter days. The numbers of cases and hospitalizations are are coming down, thankfully, and we are so grateful to see this. You know, everyone is very tired, you know, so it has been a long winter so far, but we're really pleased to see the numbers improving. What's morale like inside the hospital? Do people feel that sense of improvement or is there just still such total exhaustion? You know, it's a bit of both, um, but I think hope wins the day uh, and people are very hopeful. We have had a a vaccine rollout, uh, primarily starting with frontline healthcare providers. and, And so that really brought a lot of optimism and hope and uh, protection to the workforce. And so that's great, but it's been many months. And so people are very tired and we know that everyone's tired of the restrictions and the, you know, the desire to get back to normal is, is just an overwhelming force right now. So were you there when the vaccination started at Johns Hopkins Hospital? Yes, yes. I'm part of a group that helped to facilitate that. And it was an enormous operational project uh, to stand up the um, infrastructure to properly care for these pharmaceuticals that must be frozen and distribute them throughout our health system. And, you know, we have an enormous team that has done a, a fabulous job of all of the details of that. So I imagine that you were there for some of the first shots that were given to healthcare workers who had seen hundreds of people with COVID and many of them die. You know, what what was that like? You know, it, it's it been such a ray of hope in, in this very dark time. And everyone is very excited that the vaccine is here and that the data are so good. And I, I have to say that it was very emotional for our staff to have the opportunity to be vaccinated, to know that that protection is here, that that is the beginning of the end of this situation. And as you say, after after so much death and tragedy around this, it, it is truly emotional for people um, to have the opportunity to be vaccinated. I'm sure many of them were worried about their own safety for many months. Absolutely. You know, the the fear has been palpable in our hospitals and health system since the very beginning. And the frontline personnel have been incredibly brave and incredibly dedicated to their work. But this is an enormous relief to to have a vaccination and, and some protection. Now, the existence of the vaccine, the strong data behind it have uh, led to vaccine optimism, which, you know, it entails in part really seeing the end of the pandemic. How do you see the value of the vaccine? Do you think it's fair to at least on the horizon out there see the end of the pandemic with the vaccine? What's your general sense of where things are headed? My general sense is that we are on the right path, but we are proceeding down that path slower than I would wish. And um, there is the real sense that we are in a race with this virus. Uh, The emergence of variants has been well publicized but, but is continuing. We're watching evolution in real time as this virus 
mutates and selective advantage is is given to some of these variants. And and so this is a threat. So let's talk about that race. Tell me about the the humanity side of that race. What what do we need to do to win the race? So we know what the virus is doing, but what we need to do is two things. One is to persevere in our infection prevention. So keep doing the things that have worked to control transmission of the virus. And those are the very basic infection prevention measures like masking and physical distancing, all the things we've been doing for these many months. And then the second piece of it is the vaccination rollout and conferring immune protection to as many people as we can as quickly as possible. So that's the way that we can win the race. Do you see one part of the race making sure that the vaccine distribution is equitable and that the communities with very high rates of coronavirus are actually getting protected too? Absolutely. That has been one of the major challenges and continues to be one of the major challenges. So we know we want the numbers to be as high as possible. And so there's been a push for vaccines in arms. And, and just the raw numbers. But those of us who are working on the vaccine rollout are acutely aware that we need equitable distribution of the vaccines and to get them to the people who are at the highest risk of catching the disease and dying from it. So the FDA is reviewing and, and as we're talking, expected to authorize shortly a third vaccine. The Johnson Johnson vaccine is just one shot. Do you think that will help with the race? Absolutely. We're thrilled to have another uh, type of vaccine joining what we already had from Pfizer and Moderna. We're hoping that production of all of these can can ramp up. And um, we're looking forward to good news if the FDA, FDA does authorize Johnson & Johnson. So there's some people who say like, look, we've got this race one. Look at this. We've got a great vaccine. We're going to have another one. The numbers are dropping so quickly. Why are you so worried about the virus side of the race? What's on the virus side of the race? You know, I keep thinking back to my days in Texas of a a football game that the Dallas Cowboys played uh, when celebration prior to the end zone led to disaster. And, And that's my fear right now, is that if we let our desire to get back to normal and to roll back our restrictions win the day too early, then we will risk this wonderful outcome that that is within our sights. And so that's why I'm urging everyone to persist in the precautions and, and have some patience while we do the vaccine rollout. You know, right now we've only vaccinated about five to 6% of the United States population fully vaccinated. And I think in a, a 14% have gotten their first dose, but it's at the current rate going to take us months, actually 10 months at the current rate to get to anything close to herd immunity. And I anticipate that we'll be able to accelerate that, but we're just not there yet. There's a lot of virus still out there. There is a lot of virus out there. So we've seen sharp declines, which are wonderful and and greatly needed. But we have to remember, we're still seeing almost 80,000 cases a day and 2,400 deaths a day. So we're still at a very high level. And we really need to drive that down much further before we let up on any of our efforts. So we're seeing things move in the right direction. There's a temptation to slow down some of these restrictions. And to some extent, some of the restrictions may no longer be necessary. But what I hear you, you saying is that this is a moment for us to finish the race and not start dancing on our way to the finish line. Absolutely. And, you know, I think it may sound corny to say, but we really are all in this together and it needs to be a coordinated effort. We need to think about as we are vaccinated to think about all those who are not yet vaccinated and the risk that letting down on precautions poses to those other individuals while they're waiting for their turn. So I I just urge everyone to think collectively resist the temptation to to let up too soon, um, because I, I do think that we can beat this. Now, you have been just absolutely immersed in the fight against the pandemic now for a year, basically, at the time that we're talking, maybe more. What is your mental state like as you look forward? I mean, how do you bring these different feelings together, the optimism of the humanity side of the race, the pessimism of the virus side of the race, the variants, you know, what do you um, want the public health on call listeners to know? 
Well, I think we're all tired and we all definitely want the end of this. And I put myself in that category as well. And so that's part of the urgency of this message because I do want to get to that day and I want to get to the day when we're back to normal sooner rather than later. I think that if we all follow precautions and have patience and roll out the vaccinations as as quickly as we can and everyone steps forward when it's their turn, that we can get there in the next several months. Uh, I'm looking towards summer and very hopeful for the, the fall. But I, I just have that fear, I guess. I'm, I'm tired. I, I have been doing this for a long time. And my concern is that we will lose this opportunity and, and see yet another surge uh, due to the variants. And, and I don't think any of us want to go back there. The goal here is not to steal defeat from the jaws of victory. Absolutely. Thanks so much, Dr. Mariakis. Thanks for having me. Public Health On Call is produced by Josh Sharfstein, Lindsay Smith-Rogers, and Stephanie Desmond. Audio production by Spencer Greer, Niall Owen McCusker, C.N. Oates, and Matthew Martin, with support from Chip Hickey. Distribution by Nick Moran. Production support from Catherine Ricardo and Neiman Outland. Social media support from Brenda Hagader, Grace Holes-Fernandez, and Caroline Wong. Thank you for listening.